Uh, hi, my name is David Mills, and uh, I've been making games under the banner Suits and Nukes. Uh, I'm a solo dev working in Unity. I got about 15 years under my belt. You've probably played or seen or seen somebody play uh, something I've done: Astro Creep games, uh, Littlest Penguin, Nightmare Fishing Tournament. Uh, I've been in kind of a hole, you know, for like the past 10 or so years, and not really paying attention to what's really been going on. Just kind of heads down working on shit. Uh, and this year, I'm doing uh, the Game Design World Championship 2022 GDWC. And basically, I'm just kind of kind of go through those projects and uh, you know, talk about them a little bit. I don't typically uh, show my face. I don't do, like, webcamming or I don't, so whatever the etiquette is. You know, whoops. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to start with Punch Trunk. There's not really a lot of structure to what I'm... I'm just kind of firing off the dome here, kind of watching, you know, some clips. Punch Trunk, if you don't know, is uh, it's directly based off of an old Looney Tunes cartoon. Uh, Chuck Jones was involved. He's pretty famous. Uh, you know, did a bunch of cartoons, had his own variety hour after a while. Uh, I just watched the cartoons growing up, and I thought, hey, this is a great premise for a game. Uh, it's, it's a lot of how I view the world at this point. Like, I just kind of... Whatever I'm doing, you know, if I'm not terribly bored out of my skull, typically I'm trying to think, you know, would this be like something, hey, you know, maybe we could kind of get an idea from, maybe make a game or whatever. But the elephant one, the elephant cartoon was basically just prepackaged and ready to go. I just, I saw an opportunity to do just kind of something fun, you know, like there's not really a lot of games out there where you could be a tiny elephant in the city. Right, like I don't know of any. I'm sure there's something somewhere. I mean, from a from a mechanical point of view, it's a very simple game. Like you just uh, replace the elephant with a cube, and you're just kind of moving around. There's not really a lot to talk about, but you know that's where the art picks up. You know, the aesthetics and the uh, mechanics they kind of work to carry each other. Like a lot of times, people will argue, you know, Unity, Unreal Engine, you know, which one's better. It's really determined on you know what you're going for. There are strengths and weaknesses on either side, and uh, you know depending on whether or not you're comfortable developing in a certain medium, it really comes down to you know, just preferences. Honestly, like if you're trying to achieve a certain effect that can't be pulled off, the recent Unreal Five you know demo was pretty intense, but uh, I mean it doesn't rule Unity out completely. You know, it just means that. You got to really bring it with your art direction. You know, if you want to make something, it's not just about realism. It, it's more about, uh, you know, what you do with what you got. Because nothing's future proof. Everything's going to be just eventually, right? So when I set out to make it, it was just going to be like sort of a goat simulator situation. Goose Game was another big influence. Just the freedom to really tackle like whatever, you know, objectives in any order. Just wanted to be light, cartoony, fun, simple to pick up, deeper than it looks if possible. You know, like I know I just called it a square, like a cube being pushed around, you know, but you look at the footage, you play the game and it's clearly got like different shit you can do. There are interlocking mechanics, like you can throw things at people, right? And you can throw things at people from the skateboard jump the skateboard a lot of people were sort of turned off when they found out they couldn't jump which elephants can't jump in real life just saying um but you could with the skateboard so it's like an augmented you know changing what you have what you think you have upgrading the way we do in real life you know like the arguments that people are sort of like androids you know with our phones but you just because it you put it down and walk away from it you don't think of it that way i mean some people are wearing the damn things so, I mean, it's already happening. Yeah, but you know, just, I thought the elephant game would be kind of a cute way to sort of get my foot in the door a bit and, you know, make people kind of see who I am. Because what I do is a lot of horror and that, you know, while being a very appealing genre right now and, you know, for as long as I can really remember, there's always been horror hounds out there who just, you know, really go for the scares and whatnot. Uh, I do a lot of horror projects because uh, I got some dark, fucking imagination things that I like to, you know, play and see happen and yeah, you know, nobody gets hurt, so there's no problem. It's uh 
know, growing up, I really liked movies like The Thing. You know, that was my all-time favorite. That's where Aqua Creep came from and Aqua Creep 3D. Um, just trying to do John Carpenter's The Thing, but have it play out in a way. I mean, I'll talk about it more on that, obviously. I can't. I'm supposed to be talking about Punch Drunk right now. And there's just all kinds of things you could do. Like, you know, you throw cans at people. You, you know, get picked up by a cat. Just, it's baby's day out with an elephant, you know? And uh, you, at one point, there's a nuclear bomb, which that was a real, that, that was a real uh, 11th hour addition, I guess you could call it. Uh, I, I have this bomb asset that I use in tons and tons of games, uh, Dune Punk, Blood bath bay is a secret way to get that yeah i added the nuke and it ended up kind of being like the hidden edge that sort of like i guess propelled the project i don't want to call it infamous status but it, it definitely once it got picked up by news outlets and uh you know people started kind of passing it around it had like a that momentary moment in the sun you know which <laughs> I, i've been doing this you know over a decade I can tell you right now, things come, things go, but boy, they used to stick around a little, a little longer. Man, things are just the cool the second you fucking put them down. Like it's already starting to lose its its heat. And then you got your runaways, like you're among us and whatnot, just right place, right time. I couldn't tell you. You know, you, you just can't capture like lightning in a bottle consistently. But it's something that uh, you know, it's something we all strive for. But it's <sighs> I'll be damned, you know? <laughs> lightning in a bottle? What the hell would you even do with it if you had that? Like, how, as much as lightning in a bottle is described as, like, this, you know, epitome of what we all look for, it, what the fuck are you going to do with lightning in a bottle? It's not, wouldn't that, like, zap out immediately? I mean, isn't it like fire where it needs fuel, or is it, I mean, I don't fucking know. That's why I just make games, all right? I don't study lightning. Oh, uh, yeah, so there's, uh, there's actually, like, um, it's not a glitch. It's more of like a design flaw. Uh, I, I don't mind sharing is when you come into something like the pizza shop, you know, everything actually turns on behind the scenes because I'm always trying to conserve like, you know, don't have the things computing that don't need to be computed like if you're not showing something don't let it exist. You know, there's already like methods like uh a collision. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. I've just read it. Yeah, kind of like what Crash Bandicoot people did, where if it's not physically, you know, visible on the screen, then it's not being drawn, and that saves you a little bit of uh, under the hood stuff there. Again, like I'm not terribly technical. I just know the techniques, like what to do to achieve what I want to do, as opposed to why it works. Sometimes uh, I know Unity's got a lot of quirks and shit, but uh, I mean, you, you get kind of it's like growing pains. You get used to it. You find out what works and what doesn't, and then you sort of, you know, don't do it again if you got burned last time. Uh, every now and then it'll crash, so what you got to get into the habit of doing is just saving every time. Like, you get to a point where you don't, you think to yourself, boy, it would sure suck to lose everything that I've had since I last saved. That's when you hit the save button. Okay, because the time to hit it is... Before the crash, not after, and damn sure not during, because it ain't really going to respond. I mean, there's really not too terribly much to say. Uh, there were some some bits from the cartoon that I didn't actually lift, just purely out of, like, it's, it's a lot of work, as opposed to, like, proportionally what you'd be getting out of it. Like, there's this whole sequence where uh, you go up to a little girl's apartment somehow, and uh, you get into like her dollhouse as the little elephant and the mom's like you know what are you doing go to bed that kind of stuff and you know the screams at her scare it's the same joke played out in a different way which you know i mean the jokes set up by the cartoon are very much like a like a baseline and i i very much wanted to extend beyond that baseline we're saying okay how about the parts you didn't see in the cartoon like how that elephant actually get around let's take into account you know, all the little trials and tribulations. You don't see the elephant get run over by a fucking car, that's for sure. With a blood streak, you know, trailing out behind the tires or nothing. Uh, that was my addition. That's what I bring to the mix. That's my uh, deal. And if you look at my other games, it's really nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, that being said, maybe I should move on to the other thing that I have. Fathoms of Fear. Spooky diving game.